this video is going to be all about Gibbs free energy and how delta G is actually related to K and the equilibrium constant and favorability of either reactants or products. So remember that delta G naught of reaction is the change in free energy and the change in free energy is when all of the reactants convert completely to pure products. So it's the work that is able to be done by the reactants as they convert to the products. And this not means we're at standard conditions. So remember when delta G is positive, the reaction is not spontaneous, which means that the reaction will not proceed on its own, so the reactants are favored. If delta G is negative, then the reaction is spontaneous, it happens on its own, and products would be favored because products are going to be formed in a spontaneous reaction. And then if delta G is equal zero, then we're at equilibrium. Remember that if something is product favored, so if something happens on its own or something is much more likely to occur at a specific temperature, then products are favored. If the reactants react and form products, the products are favored, and in a reaction that products are favored, the KEQ, the equilibrium constant, is greater than one. So whether this KEQ is KC, KP, KA, KB, KSP, no matter what, it's always greater than one. So therefore, both delta G and K are actually related to reaction favorability, so whether it's reactants or whether it's products. And the equilibrium constant is related to favorability, therefore it's related to delta G, because both of these variables are related to favorability of a reaction, so therefore somehow they're related to each other. So the larger value of K, so that means that the more your products are favored, Okay, so the larger the value of K, the more negative value the delta G. So if you have a KEQ that's very, very large, that means your products are very favored, which means it's probably a very spontaneous reaction, so delta G is going to be negative. Remember that delta G naught, this naught means that it applies under standard conditions. However, most reactions don't happen under standard conditions. So instead, we just use delta G and Q. Remember that Q is when we calculate the equilibrium constant at any condition, if we don't know if it's at equilibrium or not. So it's actually useful to determine whether something will react under specific conditions. So will reactants be favored? Will products be favored? That's looking at K compared to Q. And then we can also look at delta G in order to calculate Q. Here we have delta G. Okay, this is the free energy at any condition equals delta G naught. That's free energy at standard, so 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin. These delta G naught values are what come out of appendix C, and that's plus RT times ln Q. Now write this down. This R is 8.314. It's your 8.314 R because that's our energy R. Right, it's 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin. So at equilibrium, remember, at equilibrium, Q equals K, and at equilibrium, delta G equals zero. So then what that means is if we rearrange everything, delta G naught equals RT times LN of K. This is on your equation sheet. This allows you to go between free energy and the equilibrium constant. And if we wanted to rearrange to solve for K, we could actually get K equals E. Okay, so this is essentially inverse ln to the negative delta G over RT. However, this one up here, this is the one that's on your equation sheet. You just need to know if you were solving for K, how could you rearrange and get K on the side by itself. So this allows us to go between delta G and K. <clears throat> so from this above equation, we can figure out at 298 Kelvin that delta G, if this is negative, this is spontaneous which means KEQ is greater than one. Okay, so again, if delta G is negative. So if you don't believe me, plug in a number, plug in negative 10, plug in 298 Kelvin, 8.314, and see what you get for K. So if delta G is negative, KEQ is greater than one, that's because a negative delta G means a spontaneous reaction and it favors the products. If delta G not equals zero, then KEQ equals one, because we're at equilibrium. And if delta G is positive, then KEQ is less than one because a positive delta G means that it's non-spontaneous and so it's gonna favor the reactants. So this actually allowed us to pull in some equilibrium that we've looked at before and also 
use what we're working on right now with free energy and with delta G, and now you can actually calculate the equilibrium constant. So instead of just saying that it's a spontaneous reaction because delta G is negative, you actually could plug values in and you could solve for the equilibrium constant variable and tell me just exactly how spontaneous it is. So if KEQ is 1.1, then we know the products are favored. It's a spontaneous reaction. But if KEQ is 1,000, we know that it's very spontaneous and it will shift completely to the right to all products all the time.